Greetings to the people. This is Tanya. On April 15th, my comrades and I expropriated $10,660.02 from the Sunset Branch of the Hibernia Bank. Casualties could have been avoided had the persons involved cooperated with the people's forces and kept out of the way until after our departure. I was positioned so that I could hold customers and bank personnel who were on the floor. My gun was loaded, and at no time did any of my comrades intentionally point their guns at me. Careful examination of the photographs, which were published, clearly shows this is true. Our action of April 15th forced the corporate state to help finance the revolution. As for my ex-fiancé, I don't care if I ever see him again. During the last few months, Stephen has shown himself to be a sexist, ageist pig. Not that this was a sudden change from the way he always was. For those people who still believe that I'm brainwashed or dead, I see no reason to further defend my position. Consciousness is terrifying to the ruling class, and they will do anything to discredit people who have realized that the only alternative to freedom is death and that the only way we can free ourselves of this fascist dictatorship is by fighting, not with words, but with guns. I am a soldier in the people's army. Patria o muerte, venceremos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Cults Coffee and Conversation. My name is Carl. And I'm Holly. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting edition of the Symbionese Liberation Army, also known as the SLA. We hope you enjoyed the last episode, and uh, we hope you're you're hanging on the edge of your seats. Well, I certainly am. Yes, I am too. By the way, my name is Carl. And I'm Holly. And we, of course, once again, we are now here to do the part where we beg. We beg all you cultonites out there. All of you, to let us know what you think. Give us some feedback. Give us five stars. Give us something, please, because I need it. Holly needs it, too, but I need it, too, to stroke my ego. No, I'm just kidding. But we need it just for the algorithm that they have to kind of keep us going, give us a little more words of encouragement. That would be great as well because we will read it, and if it's negative, I'm still going to read it. I call it Field of the Fire. But anyway, in order for us to... Reach out to us. We have a few things. We've got the Facebook account, which is Colts Coffee and Conversation. We have the Instagram account, which is Colts Coffee Convo. And then, of course, we have the Twitter machine uh, at Colts Coffee Con 1. Colts Coffee Con and the number 1. And we also do have our, our voice message as well, Holly. Yes, you can leave us a voicemail on Anchor, and it'll come to us, and we can add it to any episode that uh, we want. And also you can record a voice memo on your smartphone and you can email it to our email address at cultscoffeeconvo at gmail.com. Beautiful. And now this is where we do our disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, We are just normal, regular people. This stuff is based on our opinions of what we have to say. Uh, Also, it's a lot of fact checking as well. But definitely, uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. All righty. Are you ready to get into it, Holly? Not quite. Oh, what, what's going on? We have to find, uh, we have to know what is our coffee of the day. Oh, that's right, because we are cults. Coffee and conversation. I am having a standard, boring, <laughs> regular cup of black coffee. You didn't put anything in it? I did. I actually put Italian sweet cream. Mm, that sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. What are you drinking? Well, I had one of those uh, Java Chip No Whip Frappuccinos. Ah, cheating again. Cheating again. How dare you. So it's a coffee you. treat. Oh, that's right. It is a coffee a coffee treat. So, all righty. So, we ended up with the last episode. Uh, I'm sorry, last episode of the the beginning of the adventures and the birth of Tanya. Yes, she, uh, Patricia Hurst, was on the bed and she was interviewed by the group, and basically they voted her in That's as a full fledged member of the Symbionese Liberation Army. Beautiful. So now the SLA was living underground in San Francisco. No one could work, so money was tight. Camilla Hall withdrew $1,565 from her savings account and sold the VW Beetle 
that she owned to a dealer. Mm. Interestingly enough, an FBI clerk bought the car from the dealer and parked it in the FBI parking lot for weeks before it was discovered. Oh, what are the odds of that? Yeah. They decided to go where the money was kept and rob a bank. Mm. It couldn't be just any bank. Mm. Easy access in and out was a must. Also, they wanted to pick a bank that had surveillance cameras and recorded video. Mm. Kind of hard to believe that that was innovative in those days, but it was. Mm. Well, you know, got to protect the money, right? <laughs> well, nowadays everything's videoed oh, and yeah. surveilled. Of course. So DeFries thought now that Patricia was one of them, it would be fantastic to get a plebis- publicity photo of her as Tanya. Mm. To set the stage, the women made the seven-headed snake logo out of felt and sewed it to a red blanket. Mm. They had a Polaroid camera and had Ms. Moon for the photographer. Patricia posed in front of the black drop holding a sawed-off M1 carbine rifle. Her expression is interpreted in several different ways. She looks steely or terrified. Mm. Her lips are set in determination or defeat. Mm. She could be battle-ready or battered. Mm. This photo became iconic of Patricia Hurst as Tanya. Mm -hmm. It is. Another photo was taken of the group with a flag behind them. With her hair cropped after the photo was taken, Patricia wore wigs when out in public from then on. Mm, All righty. Well, in 1974, there was a little communication with Patricia. Now her parents continued to, uh, to break down. Now, of course, Catherine Hurst uh, to her church and to alcohol. There you go. That solves everything. Uh, Randolph Hurst started to explore uh, parts of society that he had no knowledge of. Now, he visited uh, Vacaville Prison to speak with inmates who said that they had influence over DeFries. Now, he also uh, sat a typewriter and uh, took dictation of a prisoner who said his message could free Patricia. Now, he met with uh, Volunteers for Penn, which is a people in need, uh, the warehouse where they had that food giveaway in San Francisco, as well as coalitions behind the food giveaway. Now, on March 25th of 1974, the Penn food giveaway was complete, and Mays went back to Seattle, who, of course, she was running it, uh, uh, dizzied by her month in San Francisco. Now, Randolph continued to solicit funds and acquired about $4 million dollars in an escrow account for additional food giveaway upon the release of Patricia. Now, Sarah Jane Moore uh, was fired from her position at Penn before at the end of the giveaway. She was escorted out by a beefy private investigator. Now, the next day she returned and locked herself into her office. Finally, she came out and they threatened to knock her door down. Now, she proceeded uh, unannounced to the uh, Hillsborough home of the Hearst, with a collection of reports of Penn's operations as a kind of a tribute to them and Patricia. She kept talking and talking while her five-year-old son was walking around their house. It took about three hours to get rid of her. Well, then we have now the report of the emergence of Tanya. Yeah. How did she become Tanya, right? Mm, Yes. Well, the event of Tanya's emergence was started as a flower delivery with SLA documents attached to an underground newspaper, the San Francisco Phoenix. Mm. The delivery was scheduled for April 1st, but because the delivery truck broke down, Mm. it was delivered April 2nd. It was in the style of the communique that came before. It stated, Patricia Hurst would be released within 72 hours. There was a celebration in the Hurst home, but since it was supposed to be delivered April 1st on April Fool's Day, it was a dark-hearted joke. Mm. The SLA plan was to shatter the Hurst hope of Patricia's return with the announcement of her joining the SLA. Mm. The tape of Patricia's announcement was delivered to KSAN on April 3rd. Patricia made the following points. Carl? Yeah, these points, uh, they well, here, here they are. One was, uh, and these were her own words, that she was not brainwashed. Oh, 
uh, coerced to speak uh, in the way that she was speaking. Uh, she also de- denounced those closest to her, like her father, mother, and her fiance. She also criticized her father's execution of the Pin Project and accused him of lying to the people, uh, so he was stalling for time. Now, she also criticized her mother for taking the UC region position for another term. She also told Stephen Weed, uh, which is her fiance, that she had grown out of love. Uh, she has grown and loved her comrades more than him. Uh, she also stated that she was given a choice to be released in a safe area or join the SLA. She chose to stay and fight, and you know, and that's in her quotes. Um, she also accused her father of being a corporate liar, and that in five years everything would be automated and there would be a small number of button pushers left. At the finale of her recording, she announced her new name as Tanya, who was a fighter with the Shea Guevara in Bolivia. Just like Tanya in Bolivia, Patricia was going to fight with her spirit. She chanted the words, Patria o Merte Venciermos, which means fatherland or death, we shall triumph. Hmm. Okay, so... As we can see, we're we're in that transition now. What was their number one plan to do? It also is to plan to what? Rob a bank. Yes. They need money. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the bank robbery. It's the Hibernia bank robbery. Uh, DeFries chose on April 15th uh, to do a tax day uh, to rob the bank in uh, the Sunset District of San Francisco. Now, Camilla Hall uh, chose the bank because it was in a quieter part of town. Now, in the apartment, the SLA uh, were preparing their uh, bo- uh, their bodies and minds with a calisthenics and weapons training. Now, Patricia was taught uh, to lace bullets with cyanide and to assemble a pipe bomb. Now, she was threatened. I'm sorry. She was treated as a full-fledged member of the group by now. Now, there were two reasons to do the bank robbery. A, obviously, they needed money. And two, to, to freeze one of the publicity and to show Patricia was one of them and the bank had what security cameras now under false ID Camilla Hall was able to rent four cars now they splurged for dinner that night with steaks and potatoes uh, and knowing that they would obviously get more money the next day now DeFries had to split the teams in two parts yes so they had the inside team they would do the actual robbery so we had DeFries Ms. Moon, and Nancy Ling, and Patricia. The outside team were the lookouts and the getaway, and to stall the police if necessary, those were William Wolfe, Bill and Emily Harris, and Angela Atwood. Now, Camilla Hall was standing at the doorway of the bank. Each person had a code from one to nine. One was to freeze, and nine was Patricia. The goal was to go early, show Patricia was with them, and get out in 90 seconds. Mm. Camilla Hall started the robbery by opening the door so DeFreeze, Ms. Moon, and Nancy Ling could march in. As Nancy was coming through the door, she dropped her ammunition, which clanged all over the floor. <laughs> While she was getting the ammunition back, she shouted, SLA, SLA. DeFreeze stepped in and shouted this was a holdup and for everyone to get down on the floor or they would get their head shot off. Mm. Now, I admitted all of the profanity, okay, <laughs> just to let you know. Oh, this is supposed to be a family show? Well. How dare you. Yes, so there was more <laughs> colorful words I'm added to that. i sure there was. <laughs> there were six customers and 18 employees in the bank. The branch manager was in the second floor break room and heard the commotion and pushed the silent alarm. That called the police and started the security cameras shooting four pictures per second. Hmm. Ms. Moon jumped over the teller partition and started grabbing cash from the drawers. DeFreeze disarmed the security guard. Passersby thought it was a scene being filmed for the TV show The Streets of San Francisco, that was actually being filmed a few blocks away. That's funny. Everything was going as planned until Nancy Ling panicked and started shooting. Oh. She shot at two customers who walked unknowingly into the robbery. They were not fatally wounded and survived. Mm. Patricia, meanwhile, was in the bank. 
Her assignment was to shoot the gun into the ceiling, but the gun jammed. Eventually, when she, oh, evidently, when she had laced the bullets with Sinai, the bullets changed shape and would go through the gun barrel, bar, would not go through the gun barrel properly. Mm. She recovered by shouting, this is Tanya, Patricia Hurst. Then she repeated the order that no one get up or their head would be blown off. Mm. And, of course, with all those colorful words. Expletives. Yes. The robbery took about as long as planned. They drove the two cars to where the other two cars were, switched cars, and drove the speed limit back to the apartment. The money was dumped out and counted as $10,660. Someone thought to turn on the radio They found because they wanted to know, hey, did we make the news? Right. They found only music playing the OJs for the love of money. Wow. I like that song, too. For the love of money. Ex- excellent. All right. So let's talk about what happened after the, after the robbery. So of course, obviously, they got a nice little haul. Nice little haul for their efforts. Yes. You know, what's 10000 back in 70, what, 73? 74. 73, 74. What do you think about that? Now? What would be like 30 grand, 50, 40, 50? Th- yeah, it'd be, it'd be pretty good. It's decent haul. Decent haul. So now after the robbery, eventually the media exploded with the news of the bank robbery, especially because Patricia Hearst played a part in it. Even though she had a wig on, it was clearly Patty Hearst. Now, the image of Patty Hearst from the bank security cameras holding the M1 carbine rifle became nearly as iconic as the one in front of the flag. And we've all seen that photo of her in the bank. Yes. Um, Now, the group was ecstatic about the precision of the robbery and the amount of money that they took. Now, DeVries divided the money up between everyone equally. So if they got separated, there would be some money to sustain everyone. Now, Patricia was treated with a full-fledged member of the SLA and received her share of the money. In addition, DeFries gave her the 38 caliber pistol stolen from the security guard. It was loaded, and she was told it was her personal sidearm at that point. The police uh, c- concentrated searching uh, the area for the first two cars that were parked, which was uh, miles away from the crime scene. Now, this is not the only thing that was going on in the city of San Francisco. There was uh, quite a few high um, caliber... Uh, cases going on at that time as well. Uh, You had uh, uh, things called the zebra murders and, of course, the infamous Zodiac killer as well. Holly, what's the breakdown on on these two? Well, uh, very briefly, the zebra killers were also known as death angels. And these murders were a string of racially motivated murders by a group of black Muslims that took place in San Francisco from October 1973 to April 1974. They committed 15 murders and eight attempted murders. Now, this time frame, April 1974, we are in the midst of the SLA bank robbery. Right. Okay. Now, the Zodiac Killer is the synonym of an unidentified serial killer who operated in Northern California from at least the late 1960s to the early 1970s. The killer's identity remains unknown. Mm -hmm. Although the Zodiac claimed 37 murders in letters to the newspapers, investigators agree on only seven confirmed victims, two of them whom survived. All righty. So imagine being the mayor of this, of the town of San Francisco, and there's all this stuff happening. Now, the mayor was named was uh, uh, Mayor Alioto. Now, he was a a liberal politician and was considered uh, for a running mate to Hubert Humphrey in 1968. Now, he was outraged in San Francisco, had all this murder and mayhem going on without arrests. Now, the Hiberia Bank uh, was robbed a day after the latest murder on April 16th uh, by by the Zebras. Now, he decided drastic measures should be taken. Now, he announced that the police would start stopping all black men who resembled a generic sketch of the zebra killers. Now, if they were checked out clear, they would be given a thing called, uh, were issued a zebra card to keep them from uh, further uh, further arrest and further, further harassment. Now, uh, uh, he this flew in the face of, of course, the, uh, the civil rights and echoed the apartheid laws in South Africa at the time. Now, the federal judge struck down the order after a week. 
The next step was to offer a $30,000 reward for one of the zebra killers, uh, but he came forward and gave up, gave the police all the details they needed to make an arrest of the four men from the black self-help moving and storage businesses. Now, the mayor finally ordered the police to activate a special investigative team to devote full-time tracking down the kidnappers of Patty Hearst. Now, San Francisco politicians were actually changing their minds about Patty Hearst being a kidnapping victim. No, they believed that she had joined in with the captors uh, to state her grievances of an esta- of the establishment. Now, the Attorney General of California, Evel Younger, uh, believed the FBI was timid in their search for Patricia Hearst. Okay, now, this becomes a time where there, on April 24th, 1974, there was another communique. Mm. So in his effort to negotiate the release of Patricia Hearst, Stephen Weed, her fiancé, thought it would be a good idea to get a South American revolutionary, Regis Debray. He originated the theory of small groups using guerrilla warfare to rile up the population that was dissatisfied with the current government, who then in turn would lead insurrection. Hmm. Through Joan Baez, the folk singer, Stephen was able to make contact with Regis Debray, who was living in Mexico at the time. He was interested in helping Stephen with his plan and agreed to write a letter to DeFries. Randolph Hearst, Patricia's father, was against it. He said he needed a South American revolutionary mixed up in it like a hole in the head. (laughs) In the letter, Debray challenged Patricia Hearst's genuine conversion to the SLA cause. He cited the original Tanya had studied the plight of the people and took years to realize her part in the revolution. This prompted the communique on April 24, 1974. It was Patricia, or Tanya, who spoke on the tape. Her points were the following. Yeah, her points were that she admitted to her full participation of the Hiberian bank robbery and said if anyone got in the SLA's way, they would be the enemy and should expect to become a casualty. Also, she was not brainwashed. She confirmed that again. She also, again, Stephen Weed, was now considered her ex fiance She called him a sexist, ageist pig, and she didn't care if she ever saw him again. Also, her conclusion was the phrase, uh, Patria o Muerte, Venceremos, fatherland or death, we shall triumph. Now, DeFries ended the message reiterating that if anyone in public got in the SLA's way, they will shoot, be shot without hesitation. After hearing the message, the U.S. attorney in San Francisco, James Browning Jr., decided to issue arrest warrants for all SLA members, including Patricia Hurst. The warrants for DeFries, Nancy Ling, Camilla Hall, and Ms. Moon Sultasak would be for the robbery. The warrant for Patricia Hurst would be for a material witness. This would allow the FBI to hold her like the others. Mm. The wanted posters went out for them all with the text, These subjects are to be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Mm. After the excitement of the bank robbery subsided, DeFries was tired of the cramped apartment and decided he needed to recruit more people to the cause. It bothered him that his followers were all white when he was a leader of black people. (laughs) Since the neighborhood they were in was predominantly African-American, he told Angela Atwood and Bill Harris to go with him door to door, pitching his cause to whomever answered. As usual, Bill Harris did not agree with the sensibility of the plan, but went along anyway. Yeah, they had a nice little a creative way of doing it. They were po- posing as Jehovah's Witnesses, carrying the Watchtower magazine. To freeze that, Wood and Harris would uh, spot people in the streets in the neighborhood, and they would uh, like look hip, according to them, and uh, uh, you know followed them home. And they would knock on the door uh, of their house and would conduct a like a lightning meeting. Uh, stating uh, who they were and asked if they wanted to join their cause. Miraculously, this method actually worked. Uh, They were able to recruit a family who were uh, connected to the Nation of Islam. The family questioned how small the group was and the lack of black... Well, they questioned on how 
I'm sorry, the question on how small the group was and how there was a lack of black people. Now, DeFreeze lied and said that there were other units scattered around the nation, and that the one that he was in was just a white unit. Now, the first assignment DeFreeze gave his new family of recruits was to buy three used vans and rent a different apartment further away from the FBI headquarters. Now, when the SLA moved... They left food, trash, documents, and keys behind. The keys were in the bathtub in a toxic mix of chemicals with the note warning uh, all the law enforcement agencies to the dangerous chemicals. Now, there was graffiti on the walls in the apartment, including a message ta uh, from Tanya, Freedom is the will of life. Patria o muerte venceremos. Now, even though they moved to a bigger apartment, DeFreeze was still unhappy with the location, and it was, it was a predominantly black neighborhood, and here where eight white people were living there. And that realization, DeFreeze announced that they were moving to Los Angeles. Okay, so going to Los Angeles. All yeah, we right. have quite a bit more to go on this story. We so do. We we're going to part it right here. Yes. Because it gets into it gets more and more facts, more. Much it speeds more, up. It speeds up rapidly. And. Um, you know, so far, so good. I'm very entertained. Oh, yeah. It, it gets better. Or the story gets better, but it or gets worse. worse for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Uh, on that note, good night, Holly. Good night, Carl.